Okay, welcome back. We're now talking about pre-testing methods. Okay, so there, this is uh, evaluation methods, research methods uh, that we can use to test the advertising approach before we actually put it in market. And, uh, you know, we're trying to determine how well it should do and if it's the right approach. So first we have concept testing and this is just simply you know writing down uh, the advertising concept you know the approach the ideas and on you know maybe just a piece of paper or a board and you know giving that to uh, members of your target audience and seeing what their responses are there are copy and rough tests and you know copy tests like um, writing the actual finished advertising copy uh, you know that means like the the script of the ad you know what the characters might say or if it's um like a print ad like a magazine or a newspaper writing the actual copy or if it's a um you know a direct mail piece and rough you know, the rough test means like rough copy, like rough, you know, taslak in Turkish, you know, like rough execution, you know, unfinished basically, but just, you know, like a mock up uh, of the advertisement. And we can also pre test finished ads, you know, ads that have gone through the, you know, production process. You know, we use, you know, real kind of camera ready or, uh, you know, ready to be published in a magazine or ready to be shown on television, you know, like a video uh, ads. And these we can get with, uh, we, can, we can examine these in focus groups, you know, for qualitative assessment. So, you know, show a, a video of the advertisement to focus groups even though the advertisement is finished, you know, it might be in a finished state or we could say in a rough, roughly finished state. Uh, all these things can be shown in focus groups and we can get their, uh, the, the feedback from the focus groups. We can also do what are known as theater tests or persuasion tests. And this is when we show the advertisement to, uh, in, a, in a kind of theater setting, you know, uh, in an amphitheater, and we give a um, a pretest measure. You know, before we show the advertisement in the theater, we give. You know, they, the the participants are given booklets, and in these booklets, there are the um, you know the 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 brands uh, are you know tested. You know, we we measure their uh, liking you know, their, their uh, preferences, how likely they are to purchase the brand before we show the, you know, the, the real, the, the, you know, the videos of the advertisements. And then afterwards, they're given the same booklets and, you know, they fill out measures, including their likelihood of buying the brand, or even it could just be the, you know, we, we might say like they get a free gift. You know, and if they're given a free gift, would, how much would they prefer to have this as their gift, you know, this brand? So the target brand that we're using, you know, we're, we're testing the advertisement on. You know, how likely in a, in a basket of goods would they prefer to get that particular brand? And then we measure the change from pre-test to post-test, you know, before, after seeing the advertisement. Uh, how much did they change their mind, right? And that's a measure of persuasion. One of the most famous ones that does this is uh, the ARS testing, you know, RSC's ARS testing. This is a you know research agency. They have this proprietary test method, and it's it's basically like I described. And what they do is they give um, these they give scores to the ads. Okay, so on the left here you see the ARS persuasion score range. And again, this persuasion score is a measure of the um, before, after, or pre-test, post-test change in attitude. Um, so this 
they have a um, now a uh, you know like an archive of these tests that they've done, and then they can you know benchmark how well these ads do. And and the interesting thing is that you know they have these persuasion scores, right? They've built this this you know test procedure up over time, done many 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 ad tests, and then what they can do is they look at how well these brands actually perform in the market so they can correlate the persuasion score that they've you know determined in these theater tests and they can show that there's an actual relationship in the marketplace which is really interesting so this particular comparison is you know involves uh, 332 advertisements 77 products in seven different countries. So on the left side is the persuasion score range, right? So from very low, less than two to above 12. And then they look at the average market share change. And you can see that ads that score better in the testing in terms of persuasion actually do have a market share change uh, that correlates with that persuasion score, which is really interesting. And if we look a bit, you know, further, um, the, the next columns show the percentage of ads that achieve a share point difference of, you know, less than 0.5, um, you know, from 0.5 and above, below one, one, more than one share point, and greater than two share points. So this is like the percentage of ads that in the marketplace actually achieves this change in market share so on the left here you know from point from zero to point five you can see that above uh, a persuasion score of seven fully 100 percent of the ads give a positive you know up to a half a point share increase in market share when they're when they're shown in real you know in the real world and you know that uh, on the far side, right, if we look at 2.0 plus on the far right column, if the persuasion score is less than 3, we get 0% of advertisements that achieve that market share increase of 2 points. But as we go up, right, you know, you can see that it just, it just shows you the effectiveness of this um, testing procedure, and it shows you how advertising that's, you know, demonstrably influential or persuasive can have an impact on sales in the market on, in the marketplace um, let's take another look here we have um, on the left side the market share right and on the bottom it shows four week periods so each one two three you know each um, point is you know a four week period and what it's showing is this um, Campbell's V8 brand uh, is a brand basically like tomato juice, but it's got kind of vegetable flavoring. So vegetable, you know, V8 means like eight different vegetable flavorings and a, you know, tomato juice, right? That's the brand. So they started showing this 30-second um, spot, taste great, with an ARS test score of 5.8. So, you know, that's you know, not bad, I guess, 5.8 in persuasion score. But when they started showing the ARS test score 10, beauty shot, okay, that's a 15-second spot revised, and their market share went from, you know, around, you know, the low 20s up to 25, 24, 25 over this four-week period. And then they renewed the um, beauty shot they made it like a you know changed it somehow and then that had a ARS testing score of 10.9 and you see again that the market share goes up so this is a very clear demonstration of what happens when you've got really persuasive ads right and we're talking about um, advertising evaluation and we talked about how important it was to try to get the right advertisement that's persuasive and you know, the strongest ads and that we want to test and evaluate those before we put them into market. You know, before you go ahead with the the big 
expense, which is media, right? Producing the ads is not is you know it has a cost, but it's not as costly as airing the ads, you know, of, of showing them on because the media is the major cost for a marketer. So, you know, we want to make sure that the ads are as persuasive as possible before we put them in air. So, uh, okay, so these are all pre-testing methods. And again, here's another one now, physiological tests. These actually use physiological measures, you know, um, kind of almost medical, you know, you can think of, uh, for example, galvanic skin response. This is what, you know, we know as a lie detector test, basically looking at, um, you know, how much your fingers sweat, you know, the, the galvanic skin response is a measure of how your how conductive the you know electricity can conduct across the skin of your fingers because the more you sweat the more you it conducts and um, that's a measure of your arousal right about your emotional arousal pupillometers also you know test the size of your pupil so that you know an undilated pupil versus a dilated pupil again this is a measure of your physiological arousal the problem is just to you know be clear that these methods measure arousal but not um, exactly the you know the direction of the arousal like the is it a positive or a negative arousal? You know, you if we really uh, are um, emotionally aroused, it doesn't mean that it's a, a positive thing or a negative thing. So these are a bit, you know, difficult and unreliable, let's say, and not widely used. They can be combined with other methods that kind of, for example, track the, the person is asked to list what they're thinking at the time right they're connected to these devices and they're watching an advertisement and they can kind of give their thoughts they call it thought tracking uh, and just kind of see what's going on in the person's mind and then you can kind of correlate those two measures that you know how aroused they were and what they were thinking at the time in terms of post testing methods uh, oh, before we go to post testing I just want to kind of um, summarize right Again, the goal of pre-testing is, uh, you know, the, the, when we say pre-testing advertising or other communication, it's really to figure out if we're doing the right thing and to try to do the right thing and make sure we don't make mistakes and that we also maximize the effectiveness of our, um, you know, advertising or marketing communications executions so that we, you know, before we roll out a nationwide campaign or before we you know spend the money on our you know in our budget on on media which is again the biggest cost like 80 percent or 90 percent of the cost we want to make sure that what we're doing is is working out the best that it can be so um actually since we're a little bit running short we're almost at 14 minutes now i'm gonna uh go on and end here and then we'll pick back up for post-testing methods with the, the next segment.